Hey everyone, in this new series about frame battles, we are going to focus on, in this video, the power of positioning. What I mean by this is the following. A frame battle is any situation, in terms of persuasion, where two people are trying to impose their frame on each other. For example, a buyer versus a seller. Someone trying to pitch you something is trying to convince you why you need this, while you, as the buyer, may be trying to convince them why you don't need this at all. And usually, the person who believes themselves the most wins in this type of situation. But specifically, we are going to cover the power of positioning. That is, when people come to you, the way that you position yourself can be stronger or weaker, and that defines how much power the other person has in this frame battle. That's what we're going to cover. Frame battles are very common in life, in many different situations. For example, a teacher versus a student, a consultant with a prospective client, a salesperson with a possible buyer, or two people in a debate. At the end of the day, in a frame battle, each side is trying to impose their will on the other person. They're trying to say, this is how the world works, and this is who you are, versus what the other person is trying to do, which is trying to impose their view of the world. For example, you see this a lot in a debate. Someone is trying to label the other side or trying to reduce them to a set of characteristics, while the other person is trying to do exactly the same to the other side. In specific, we are going to cover three different techniques for positioning. What I mean with positioning is the following. The way that you define yourself before you even enter the interaction defines a lot of that interaction. For example, if you are a consultant and you have possible clients coming to you, if you reach out to them, you have less power from the get-go because you're the one who is coming to them. But if they come to you, they are more qualified, so you are going to win any frame battle more easily. There are multiple effects that affect how strong your positioning is. So that's why we're going to cover three key techniques. So the first technique that you can use here is to be the first, the best, or the only at something. For example, I brand myself as the first executive persuasion and negotiation coach. If I just branded myself as an executive coach, I would not be the first one, or maybe not the best one, and definitely not the only one. So the key here is that if you frame yourself as being the first to do something, the best at something, or the only at something, you are going to have a lot more power. I see this in real time. For example, if a client comes to me and they're looking for a specific persuasion coach or negotiation coach, I'm much more specialized, so I have more power. However, if they come to me because they're just seeking another executive coach and they're comparing me with many others, then I'm not one of the first and not one of the best. So in those cases, I have less power. It's very important to notice that you can change how much you zoom in or how much you niche to change that positioning. What I mean is, just like the example that I gave you, if you are just another consultant in a space, you are definitely not going to be the first, the best, or the only. But if you are a specific consultant for a super specific thing, you can definitely be one of the first or one of the best. For example, if you are a real estate agent, that's a generic term, but you may be a real estate agent for rich clients in California that have mansions, for example. It's a lot easier to be one of the first or one of the best, or one of the only, at doing something, the more specific that something is. So you should change your positioning to be one of the first, one of the best, or one of the only at a specific thing, because that way you are going to have a lot more power. You seem more specialized, and you also create a scarcity effect, because there is not a lot of you doing what you do. The second technique is to contrast what you do with what you don't do. It's the principle of perceived contrast. That is, before stating what I do, if before that I state what I don't do first, then what I do do is going to seem a lot more emphasized by comparison. So this is something that can be used, for example, for specialization. If I say, for example, I'm an executive trainer, that's fine. But if I say, hey, I'm an executive trainer for executives only, I don't do senior leaders, I don't do senior managers, and I don't do more junior people, immediately I seem a lot more specialized by comparison. It's so like the saying goes, what you are not defines what you actually are. So this is something that you can use to seem more specialized, even if you're not. You just state what you don't do, because by comparison, that makes it seem like what you do is more emphasized. So this is another technique that you can use to seem more specialized and to have a stronger position. Because people are going to know exactly what you do and exactly what you don't do. So they are going to be more qualified when they come to you in a way. 
The third technique is to set barriers and obstacles for the people that come to you. This is a very simple technique, but it's very useful in terms of your positioning. What I mean by this is the following. If anybody can just call you and set up an appointment, for example, as a consultant, then you're not very qualified. You don't have a lot of power. But if you force people to fill a form, to book on your calendar, to state the reason, to state what are their needs, and to prepare a whole lot of things beforehand, you're going to be more qualified. So because of that, they are already subjugated in a way. They already obey what you do in its own sort of way. So what happens is, the more that you qualify these people, and the more that you set these obstacles, the less problems that you are going to have in terms of a frame battle. Because someone who already put in a lot of effort just to meet you, or just to come to you, or just to have this meeting, is probably not going to raise a lot of questions. But if you just let anybody in, then you are going to have all sorts of people that don't know why they're there, that don't agree with you, that haven't even read your materials, and so on. Naturally, this is a qualifier. Not everybody is going to accept it, and you are going to filter some people out. But the ones that stay are going to give you a lot less problems. So these are three simple techniques that you can leverage to have a stronger positioning that helps you in terms of a frame battle. First of all, be one of the first, one of the best, or one of the only, because you seem a lot more specialized and people are going to raise fewer problems. Number two, contrast what you do versus what you don't do, because then the things that you actually do are going to seem a lot more emphasized, and again, you seem more specialized, and people are going to raise less problems. The third technique is, at the end of the day, to set tests, obstacles, and things that people must overcome in order to get to you, because if they do it, they are a lot more qualified at the end of the day when they come to you. All of these techniques result in fewer frame battles, because the more qualified that someone is, and the more that they know about you, the less that they're going to doubt you or challenge you openly. If you've enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing to be notified of similar material, and don't forget to check out the channel for more negotiation and persuasion techniques for this purpose and others. Thank you so much for watching.